All right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. To do this, in the top right hand corner, you're going to click on the little gear icon and click PWA settings. Quick tip, as we're going to be doing this a lot, top right hand corner, PWA settings, that's a lot of clicks, right? You're going to do this 20 times. So I'm going to click on the left hand side, edit links. And in here I'm going to check some of the things that are going to appear on the quick launch. The quick launch is this on the left hand side, it's a SharePoint term. All right, so these are the defaults. You can add the timesheet in. Once we've configured that, we'll do it. Issues and risks, once we've configured those, we'll add that. Status reports, kind of not very useful, not exactly what you think they are. They're not status reports of projects. It essentially allows a project manager to go out and request an update on a project, and then that particular project uh, team member come back and give an update and provide some narrative around it. Strategy for portfolio analysis. We're going to come back to that later. Reports. You can access some of the reports. And the one I want is server settings. Check that. Save and close. Now on the left hand side, I see server settings. Perfect. All right. You can add additional links to this as well if you wanted to by clicking edit links. You can add a new link. Put in the custom URL. Add it to the quick launch. You can move things up and down within the quick launch, like so. If I feel like we need to do that later, we'll come back to that. But for now, server settings is all I want to save me from going top right hand corner. PWA settings, we can now use this server settings link. Obviously, down the line, you probably want to remove that once you're finished doing the bulk of your administrative changes. All right, well, let's jump into. Enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. So once you click server settings or cog PWA settings, I'm going to click on enterprise custom fields and lookup tables. Enterprise custom fields allow you to collect information about projects, resources, and tasks within your project. This information can be captured in a number of ways. It can be just free form text, it can be a long narrative, it can be pre selected options. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how to create a variety of these and talk you through some of the options here. At the top of the screen, we see our out of the box custom fields and our out of the box lookup tables. Lookup tables are used to populate pre configured selections of values to be used within one or more enterprise custom fields. All right, so on the left, bottom left hand side, I'm going to click new lookup table. We're going to create the lookup table first for any type of field that we need. If we require a lookup table for that field, we should always create the lookup table first because once you create a new enterprise custom field, you need to associate the lookup table with it. You cannot do that after the fact. You cannot change the lookup table associated with an enterprise custom field after the fact. In fact, you'd have to delete that custom field and then re-add it back. It's a silly little thing, but it's the way it is. So when we need a new custom field that requires a lookup table, we create the lookup table first. Let's go ahead and do that. This, the most common type of custom field would be one that contains a lookup table. I'm going to create a lookup table and it's going to be pretty much every project manager will use this. A list of different programs. So if a project is part of a program or a portfolio, you can add that in here. So I'm going to create new lookup table. And call it program. Okay. In here, I'm going to come down and specify the values. Okay. So we scroll down, value. I'm going to call this one uh, uh, major development, major software development, minor enhancements. Um, regulatory. All right, three different programs that we particularly we run within our organization. You can add to this down the line. You could even do a nested one. So if there was different subgroups underneath regulatory, I could say reg compliance, reg uh, internal. Right. 
and I'm going to indent these underneath by using the indent so they become part of regulatory. Now when we do this, having nested lookup tables, we must update the code mask. Really silly, right? But the way it works is each lookup table will have values in it. If you select a value that is a sub-value, for example, reg, which is under regulatory, it would be regulatory.reg-compliance. So you need to decide what the separator is going to be. <laughs> so we come in here, we put characters, what's the length, any, and the separator. So we're just saying there's going to be two separators now. And if you click up here, you can see what that separator is going to look like. Now when I click save, my new enterprise custom field called program has now been created. Next step, let's create a new enterprise custom field. Click here, new field. I'm going to create a selection here. So I'm going to say program. Um, please, and this is what the, the project manager will see when they're creating a new program or when they're updating this field when they're creating a new project. They can say, see this. So please select a program for your project. Type in anything you like in there. Let's put a nice capital P there as well. Entity type, very important. Will this custom field be used to capture information about tasks, resources, or projects? We capture information in this case about a project. The project's name, the project program, project manager, things like that. Information, metadata related to the project. You can also capture things about resources, such as their work location. Uh, their eye color, if that's important to you, right? You can also capture things about tasks. What's uh, where's this type of task going to be uh, carried out? What kind of task is it? Any kind of information you want to capture about tasks, resources, projects can be done using enterprise custom fields. In this case, we're going to do a project enterprise custom field is the default. We can have text, cost information. How much do we think this project is going to cost? We'll come back to that. Duration, flag, which is essentially yes, no, right? Is this yes or no? Maybe it's a checkbox that you'll see when you're creating the project. You know, is this a uh, is this a uh, master project? Checkbox, yes, it is. Something like that, right? Flag, numbers, right? Not necessarily currency, but numbers, and then text. We're going with text. Custom attributes. You can have a single line of text, multiple lines of text lookup table or formula right so single line of text will look something like this when you're creating information about a project multiple lines of text will look something like this you can provide a more of a narrative lookup table will look something like this where you have this select value on the right hand side that's what we're going to use what lookup table do we want to use we're going to use program so here's a list of all of the ones that we created okay do you want to select a default value when adding new items Choose value. Yeah, we're going to go with minor enhancements as a default value. If you want to do major, you can come back and select and change that later down the line. Only allow codes with no subordinate values. What does that mean? Well, if I am selecting a regulatory project, I wouldn't be able to just select regulatory. I would have to select one of the sub-regulatory, whether it's compliance or internal. Right? So, I would not be able to select regulatory if I select only allow codes with no subordinate values. So only allow lookup table values that don't have children underneath them. I'm going to go with that. I like that. Allow multiple values to be selected from a lookup table. As a rule, always do not allow this. Do not do this. Reason being, when you're reporting on this information, it comes a reporting nightmare if you have two values for a particular thing. If you're trying to group all your projects by a program and a project appears in two programs, you could be double counting if you didn't take that into consideration in Power BI. So don't allow that. You can also do a formula. So for example, if you have some project costing information, uh, you know, uh, operational costs, capital costs, Total costs. The total cost would be a lookup table. Uh, sorry, a, a formula. Enterprise custom field would be the sum of capital 
and operational costs, right? Something like that. Maybe we'll create that later. Department, we talked about this earlier, but it allows you to separate out content and filter it from different resources. You can also use graphical indicators, right? If it's, uh, for example, the project's red, yellow, or green, right? It's a subjective indicator, red, yellow, or green. You could have graphical indicators that in instead of showing up as red, yellow, green, it'd just be a red dot or a yellow dot within the views in Project Web App. And we'll show you that later. You can say that the particular field is being controlled by workflow. What that means is if this field can only show up once the project's approved by the, you know, the CFO, something like that, you can specify that this field can only be visible once approved. Right? We're not going to control it via workflow. Makes it quite complicated. Allow editing for project detail pages on SharePoint task list. No, we don't want to do that. That's again, SharePoint task list. We're not going to go down that path. Require that it has information. Very important one. Do you want to make this mandatory? And again, you can control that via workflow. For the most part, I would say no, unless it's like two or three key pieces of information, like project cost or who's the project manager going to be, something like that. But especially when you're first getting started, let's not require information. What this means is once a project's created, you will not be able to save or update that project unless you've gone in and specified that information that was required by you. So I'm going to say no and press save. That is our first enterprise custom field created. Oh, an unknown error has occurred. What have I done? All right, figured out what I did wrong. So <laughs> I had only allow codes of no subordinate values, but I'd selected a top level as the default. <laughs> so you have to come in here and select something lower as the default. I'm just going to go with major software development and we'll save that. And we should be good. Perfect. And there is my new program, Enterprise Custom Field. Let's do another one. New field. We're going to call this one Project Cost. In fact, we're going to say Capital Costs. Please estimate your capital costs for this project. Remember, the project manager is going to see that. It's going to be a cost field. We're not going to use a lookup table or formula this time around. And I think we're good. Save it. That's how quick and easy it can be when you're first getting started. I'm going to actually create a slightly different variation on that. We've got capital. I'm going to have expense. I'm going to click here, copy field. It's going to take a copy replica of capital costs. We're going to call it operational costs, actually. Okay, operational costs. Boom, we're going to see operational costs appear in the list. I can now come in, change that. In fact, don't need to do anything. It's perfect, ready to go. Cost, please. Oh, there we go, operational. So you can be pretty smart and quick about this. Copy and pasting enterprise custom fields and save yourself some time.